Welcome to Movement and Function. I'm Beth Wagner. Today's video, I'm going to take you through some exercises to help you strengthen and stabilize your shoulder after dislocation. If you've recently had surgery or your dislocation has been very recent and the doctor has instructed you to stay in the sling and not move your shoulder yet, then please don't start this program. It's very common after dislocation for the shoulder to dislocate again. So the initial movements are really important. And if you have had surgery, it's even more important that your surgeon okay you to begin to move your shoulder again before you start these exercises. Another thing to consider as we go along with these exercises, if at any point in time you start to feel that apprehension type feeling that your shoulder is about to pop out, please stop. Take these movements slowly and pay attention to how your shoulder's feeling. The goal of these exercises is to strengthen your shoulder and rebuild the stability necessary in your shoulder for you to move it without dislocating it again. All right, let's start the exercises. The first one is a quick posture correction. Oftentimes after injury, being in the sling, surgery, there's a tendency to allow your chest to roll forward and to sort of curl your arm and shoulder in. The first thing we wanna do is correct the posture, get you back to neutral alignment through your spine and your shoulder girdle before we start moving your arm. If you start from this curled poor posture point, you are number one, more likely to dislocate the shoulder again and or number two, irritate some other structures in the shoulder. So starting with correct posture is really, really important. Okay, so starting at the base, we wanna have a neutral pelvis. So not too rolled forward and definitely not too slouched. You should have a little bit of arch in your low back. Lift your chest and relax the shoulder blades down and back. Finally, do a little bit of a chin tuck to bring your head out of that common forward head posture. So we'll do a little bit of a chin tuck just to make sure your head and your neck are aligned right up over the middle of your trunk. Now from this position, let's do 10 shoulder rolls. Just bringing your shoulder blades down and back. Your hands can be right here in your lap or along your side, wherever's most comfortable for you. After 10 shoulder rolls, let's do 10 chin tucks. Just bringing your chin straight back and relax. Back and relax. You might feel some deep muscle activation in the front of your neck, and you might feel a bit of a stretch at the base of your skull. Both of those are quite normal. After 10 chin tucks and 10 shoulder rolls, you should be in neutral alignment. Now we can start the other exercises. The first one is isometrics for your shoulder. Isometric simply means that we're going to be applying resistance to the muscles in the shoulder without actually moving the shoulder. This is a great way to stabilize your shoulder because you're activating muscles which, are, which is going to sort of squeeze the shoulder, compress the shoulder to help build stability without moving your arm into potentially uh, positions where it might dislocate. I'll demonstrate these exercises with my right shoulder. So starting in tall posture, I'll bend my elbow up to about 90 degrees, with my hand just comfortably faced forward. We'll be using the left hand for manual resistance. The first position is that I'll place my left hand on the inside of my right wrist and gently press out. So I'll be using my right arm, my shoulder muscles actually, to be pressing in. Hold for five seconds and then relax. You can also use your fist, you could use your palm, whatever's most comfortable for you. All right, position number two is to be pulling in with your left hand and pressing out with your right arm. Hold for five seconds and then relax. All right, position number three is going to be pushing down with my left hand, pressing up with my right arm to resist that. Five seconds and then relax. Position four, I'm pushing up with my left hand, resisting by pushing down with my right arm. All right, now that we've worked our way around the wrist, we're gonna move up to the elbow. Position five, going to be pushing out at the elbow. 
and my right, my right elbow is going to be pulling in. Five seconds. Position six, I'll be pressing in with my left hand and resisting that by pressing out at my right elbow. Hold for five seconds and then relax. Position seven, I'll press my left hand against the back of my right elbow. So my right elbow is going to be pressing back into my hand. Hold for five seconds. You could also do this one against a wall. So just stand up, into the, stand up against the wall and press your elbow back into the wall. That's a little easier than trying to resist with the hand with that one. For the last position, make a fist with your right hand and then press into that fist with your left hand. Hold for five seconds and relax. This one also might be a little easier, just pushing into a wall. So for the last couple, you could stand by the wall, press back into the wall for five seconds, turn around and press forward into the wall for five seconds and then rest. Perform five repetitions, holding for five seconds in each position. I recommend doing this as a circuit. So work your way around your wrist and your elbow rather than performing five repetitions of one at one point of resistance all in a row. You'll get better activation and that's more functional. As we move in space, our muscles are constantly turning on and off in a coordinated manner in order to support our shoulder. So the order I did it in isn't necessary. You could choose your own order, but pick something that makes sense to you to work your way around the wrist, work your way around the elbow, and then push forward and back. The next exercise is weight bearing. I'll demonstrate that exercise standing up. For the weight bearing march, go ahead and find a countertop um, where you're just slightly bent over. Place both hands on the countertop so that your hand is below your shoulder and make sure you have good posture with this. You still want your shoulder blades squeezed down and back and your chin tucked. You don't want to do this exercise in a rounded position. Okay, so with good posture, now we're simply going to shift your weight back and forth 10 times. As you practice this day by day, gradually put more and more weight on your right hand and increase the amount of time that you spend with the weight on that side. The last exercise is a wall crawl. This introduces range of motion. Take this one really slowly, build it up gradually. We'll start, so if I have a wall right here in front of me, start with your hand on the wall and you're simply gonna crawl up the wall as far as you feel comfortable, listening for that sensation in your body that says you're getting close to your shoulder popping out and stop. Stop before you get to that point. All right, so crawl up as far as you can and then crawl back down. Start with 10 repetitions. As you feel more and more comfortable day by day, week by week, start to bring your hand out away from your body a little bit. Crawl up the wall this way and then gradually turn your body away from the wall and continue crawling up the wall so that gradually, again, day by day, week by week, your arm is coming a little farther away from your body as you crawl up the wall and then come back down. Start with 10 repetitions facing forward. Do that for at least three or four days in a row before you move your hand out to the side. Stay at that new level three or four days, then another three or four days out to the side. If you have any pain, weakness, you can't quite lift your arm up, or again, that feeling like it might pop out, stop. Stay at the level, uh, stay at the current level, at least for three or four days without pain or any symptoms before you progress to the next level. Besides doing these exercises, another key factor to avoiding dislocation is to simply avoid the positions and movements that caused your dislocation to begin with. Some common examples of this are sleeping with your arm overhead, reaching wide outside your body, say to reach for um, something in the refrigerator, even the remote control. Another provocative movement is reaching up and behind you, like reaching for the seatbelt in the car or reaching into the back seat uh, in the car. So whatever movement pattern caused your dislocation to begin with, avoid that type of movement in your day-to-day -day life as much as possible. 
down the road, once you've established baseline stability and you're able to move your arm more, you may be able to strengthen your shoulder into uh, those positions that have been provocative for you in the past. But everybody's shoulder's different. So before you try doing that on your own, build up gradually. And I would recommend if you've had frequent dislocations to go ahead and seek out a physical therapist for a specialized treatment plan and exercise program for you in order to strengthen into those movements without risking a dislocation. I hope you found these exercises helpful for you to strengthen, stabilize your shoulder and avoid any further dislocations. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and it's always great to see a thumbs up. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.